Hey folks, welcome back to Fantasy World Dizzy. Today's show is filmed before a catatonic studio audience. When we left off, we'd broken out of prison and stolen a few bits and pieces from around the castle. Figures we'd give ourselves a reason to get locked up right after our false imprisonment, huh? Our next stop is the Banquet Hall. We're going to talk to that egg that we found. So this guy's called Denzel. He was the, uh, he was the cool one of the yoke folk. He enjoys rock and roll music and completely ignoring you. He will talk to us now, however, so well, let's go for it. Now the rope is... it's an item that we can use right away. Kind of like the troll in the last video, it's not a puzzle that needs to be solved, it just makes things easier for the rest of the game. Also, I'm sorry if I'm scrolling through that text too quickly, I... I read like a bullet, you know, and if you can't keep up, just pause the video, I guess. Uh, going to the right of the entrance hall, we come to this screen, featuring a crocodile in a moat. You see how it's snapping here? It can be used as a platform, but only when its mouth is closed, so this requires either careful timing, or tying its mouth shut. Luckily, we've got just the item to do that. So what we need to do is wait for him to go through a sequence, jump on his snout, use the rope. With that, the crocodile will stop from snapping, and it allows immediate passage whenever we want. Whilst we're here, we're going to grab another unfairly hidden item. It's another boulder. And uh, head back across to the left. Yeah! How do you like me now, Croc? You're my stepping stone! Like that one scene from Live and Let Die, which is a scene I kind of pretend I wasn't in that film. Alright, that's enough of that. Our next step is to set up something that's kind of a staple in puzzle games like this one. Uh, we're going to set up a master item room. That is, a place where you keep all the items, so that you can only get them from one screen, rather than having to go through however many steps to collect them all. And in spite of setting our boulder down, we're going to pick it up, because we need it for the next puzzle. We're also going to need this bone. If I can get back up the stairs to collect it. I really hope I haven't screwed myself over in the second video. Oh no, there we go. With the bone and the boulder in our possession, we can head off to the left, watching that we don't pass under the portcullis when it's coming down, or on any odd-numbered day, because it will come crashing down and kill us. And heading off to the left, we come to this screen, the Armorog's Den. As far as I can tell, the Armorog isn't an established mythical or literary creature, it was created just for this game. If you know otherwise, then by all means tell me, because I'd kind of like to learn more about it. What we need to do is head down, into the Armorog's den, drop the bone, and pick up the boulder. The Armorog will see us, and start to charge. Look at him go with the fury of data entry programmers the world over. Okay, now he's in his den, and because he's found a bone, he'll sit there gnawing on that for a while, rather than charging us. Of course, it can, and will, still kill us if we go near it, so let's not. Now, it's backtracking time. So Fantasy World Dizzy has some of my favourite maps. This one, for example, the Portcullis map, this is one of my favourite Dizzy locales, like, from the entire series. The reason for the level of detail that you're seeing in the maps, in terms of, you know, detail in the items, and also the lack of colour, it's because of the game's memory. Very little of the game's memory is actually used to store colours, which means that we can, you know, create, I don't want to say realistic, but more intricate looking sprites than the big cartoony things that you've seen if you've watched uh, fast food, for example. The CPC did support a 16 colour palette, and there is actually a Dizzy game which uses the 16 colour palette, uh, the last one in the series, but for the most part Dizzy always used four colours and the simple colour scheme gave it a distinctive look, and it also let it show a lot more detail uh, than some of the other games at the time. Thankfully, 
the game eases up on the backtracking after this little part, but we'll come to that shortly. This screen is another screen that was easier in the Amiga version than it is in this screen, because the bird along the top, it will kill you, and in this version of the game, you can't outrun it. What will happen is, if it sees you, it will fly down in one fell swoop and kill you. The secret, therefore, is to use the clouds for cover, and go when it's not looking. What we need to do, we need to stand on the edge of the crevasse here, next to the broken bridge, push the rock into the water, and displace the water, thus raising it. Because we've only used two, we can't actually get back out if we jump onto the uh, bridge section at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to go back down, back to the Armorog's den, and collect the final boulder. Thankfully the game does kind of, like I say, ease, it does ease up on its backtracking after this point, and they actually do have a lot less backtracking in some of the other Dizzy titles, so it's annoying that it's in this game, but at least they, uh, at least they pick up. So we're going to drop the boulder into the water, the third and final boulder, and that's going to raise the bridge enough for us to jump to the other side. On the other side, we come to a shiny golden key. And we'll continue exploring the docks next time. Uh, but for now, we're going to call it a video. So, until we meet again, goodbye.